start west and go to east. So let's say we're starting on that street and we're able to use a direction board technology. So we will send that pipe underground. Now, anywhere that you have a very utility coming from your house to the street, like your water or sewer, sometimes there's some buried electric. Anytime where there's a ladder coming from your house to the street, we're going to dig a hole like that straight down over where directional borehead is going to go. Because we need to have a person visibly see that borehead pass over your water, pass over your sewer, so that it's missing all the utilities. So even if we're directional boring, we're still going to have holes dug on the side of the street the main is going to go on. So that's going to go across. There's two things that do not get located by Ohio Utility Protective Services. So if you happen to have an invisible fence for a pet or a sprinkler system for your lawn, that's information that is unique to your property. You would have to tell us when we're in your house. By the way, I have a invisible fence, that type of thing. So once we cross your property, we go four or five hundred feet, we'll go another four or five hundred feet, and we're going to pull the pipe back through. And so we'll have pipe and once we tie in a few pieces together and say we can get a thousand feet in or a couple thousand feet in, we'll test this at about 90 pounds of pressure and we'll insert natural gas into it. So at that time, you'll have the bare steel piping system. So anytime anyone knocks on your door, we'll have an, an ID tag. Every ID tag will have a picture of the person and their name. Any Columbia people that will be on the job site is a blue background. Any of the R and R people will have a little red background. But anyone that knocks on your door will have an ID tag. If they don't, just say goodbye. Hey Mike. <laughs> I think they're both blue. They're blue now? Okay. Everybody's gonna be blue. Um, since most of the meters are outside, I'll use that example first and then we'll talk about the inside. So for the people that have meters on the outside, the process is fairly simple. We're st we need to get into your house eventually to relight your appliances, but you already have a meter setting similar to this. We'll be installing a new one, and we'll be running a new service line from the main up to your house. And so we'll set up a day and a time to do that work. You'll have to have your gas turned off when we do this. Because we're going to be using your old meter, taking all the old piping above ground out, running a new service line, installing the new meter setting, attaching that to your existing house lines. We will go in and relight all your appliances. And on average, the gas has been off across Ohio less than two hours. So you should only have gas off for two hours or less. The houses that have meters on the inside, we have your account coded basement meter or garage or something like that. We know it's in the basement, we just don't know where in the basement it is. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, we need to knock on the door, name tag, we need to go into the basement and see where all your equipment is and where your meter is. Because based on where it is in the basement, gives us the best idea of where it can go on the outside. A lot of cases, the meters across the bio were placed fairly close to the chimneys and the equipment that's operating in the basement. And a lot of times, they're just going to go a few feet either to the right or to the left. However, there are some codes that we need to follow. The meters on the outside need to be away from the source of electricity. That would be an electric meter air conditioning unit, generator, and we don't want them to be under a window that is open, that can be open and used for ventilation. So there's some places where we don't allow it to be, and there's some places where you would not want it to be, in your bay window, flower garden, that type of thing. So what will happen is we will say to you, this meter can go any one of these three or four places, and then you either say, well, I really don't want it there. Can you put it here? But we'll 
will, you'll have some input in that process that usually there's a really logical place to put it based on where it currently is, where your equipment is, and where the ventilation or the bedding goes up in the chimney. So, similar to the other customers, we're going to make a tap at the street. So anywhere that we're making this tap at the street to put the new service line on the main, there'll be a hole maybe three by four feet, four by four feet. So there'll be a hole because a person has to get in there and attach the new T to the main. And then we'll run that service line up to your house, and depending on where it was decided to put your meter, you'll have a new meter set with a regulator. We're going to use your existing meters that you currently have, place them on the new meter setting, and we will run a new black pipe on the back side of this to attach to your existing trunk line in your house. Once that's done, we'll test all the work that we did, relight the appliances, and your gas will be off again around two hours. We continue down the street doing the conversions. For homes that are either empty or do not have natural gas, because every community has some homes that are empty or abandoned or don't have natural gas. And let's say we're done with the project and someone buys it and wants to fix it up and, and do some work on it. Columbia Gas is still responsible for the T, the service line, the meter setting, the regulator, and the meter. We'll install that. That's part of our service. That's no cost to you. The only cost that you would have to do the conversion is to run the inside house line pipe that's past the meter set. In order to do that, you would call our new business team whose phone, phone number is on our website, and we can give you a phone number before you go and say I'm interested in gas service and we would come out and do all that work for you. So we continue down the street. So it's normally we put the, the main line in, we follow up with the service conversions, and then we do the restoration of anything that we've had to dig up or disturb along the way. The soft surface restoration, which means dirt, grass seed and such, is usually the same week. Shortly after we finish your house, we will do the soft surface restoration. The commitment for the hard surface, which would be driveways, curves, sidewalks, that type of thing, is three weeks that we're done with your street. So when we get everybody on your street converted over to the new system, we'll come behind and do the hard surface restoration. A few things that will be a little bit different on the new system compared to the old. Since it's not steel, it's a little harder to locate. And we want to make sure that we can locate the system. So we will be using a tracer wire with the entire length of the main and the service that runs up to your house. And this tracer wire ends up coming above grade about right here and attached to your service line. So anytime you would want something located in front of your house, you're digging for a new tree or putting it in a mailbox, and you dial 811, we would come out and put a small electrical current on the copper tracer wire, and then we'd be able to locate your service line and the main line across the front of your house. So that would be on there. Anywhere that we have to open cut, trench, backhoe, that type of thing, this is placed on top of the main. So in the future, if you're ever digging in an area and you see something like this, just you stop digging and call 811. Hey Mike, we're gonna put that on the services too. So no. the if, yeah, if we have to open cut your services, you'll see that tape placed below the dirt pile. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how we fund these projects. That will be next. Well, first, no. how long will this project take, Mike? Um, it varies, you know, whether it's um, I believe it's about 
believe it should be about three and a half, four months. Three and a half, four months. And we're starting relatively soon. So this is July, July, August, September. So let's say by the end of October, we should be done. Weather permitting. He said weather permitting. It never rains or never snows in Ohio. So by the end of October, it'll all be perfect. My, the last two winters have been really rough, so weather permitting. Okay, let's talk about the funding of the projects. All across Ohio, like I said, we're putting in 170 or so miles of pipe every year. This project for this area is approximately? About 5,700 How much money? About 500000 About $500,000, $600,000. So when we did the business plan with the Public Utilities Commission, one of the things, of course, we're going to talk about is how it was funded. And it would be really difficult for me. I was in Shelby last night, and their project was $1.8 million. It would be really hard to say we're going to just disperse those costs on 100 or 200 customers. Uh, that would be difficult. So the decision that was made is that when we're done with this entire upgrade process, every customer in the state of Ohio will have a piping system very similar to this. Whether it's a brand new development that was built six years ago or a historic area, all the piping systems will be very similar to this. And because of that, it's the decision that all of our customers across Ohio will be paying for that. So since 2008, as a part of your bill, you've been paying towards the infrastructure improvement projects. So as a group of customers, say 130 of you, you're not paying 600,000, but you are paying for it and have been paying for it since 2008. And I like to tell people part of the funding, earlier when I talked about the amount of money we spend on maintenance and repair of our Bears Bill systems across Ohio, and they were, they were going up and up and up. So when we get done with these projects in the next 15 or so years, the amount of money that we spend on maintenance and repair of this becomes zero. So the money that would have been spent on this maintenance and repair of the antiquated systems then helps offset our operational expenses and the installation of these pipes. So that's how it's being paid you have been paying for it as well as all the customers in the state of Ohio, including me. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about the another benefit I see for communities, and that would be the property tax that Columbia pays on its pipeline. So, federal tax guidelines allow us to depreciate our pipeline systems over a 40 year period. So let's say this was installed in 1954. So in 1994, we depreciated this, and the amount of property tax we paid to Athens has a negligible value, it's not very much. So once we get done with the pipe installation here in 2015, complete the project, our new evaluation for this piping system will be 600000 So then we will be paying property tax on that new valuation over the next 40 years. So in most taxing authorities across Ohio, that generally goes to school systems, fire, police, maybe community centers and such. So it will be a nice little source of revenue for the city. And then the last benefit that I see for various communities is that once we are done in an area, we really have no reason to be there digging in your streets, in your tree lawns, because this pipe really has no natural enemies. Once this is installed, it doesn't rust, it doesn't grow. Its only enemy is backhoes and shovels and trenchers and such. So, as long as we take good care of knowing exactly where it is, we won't be back in your streets doing repairs in the middle of the winter because we found the leak. So we see that as a nice benefit for communities who worry about us digging in their streets and in their tree lawns in the winter. 
Okay, questions. I always forget stuff, so your questions prompt me to remember things. Yes? Um, what intrigues me is um, this stuff was put in in the 40s or 50s, and you're probably replacing some little short jobs on some of the streets, like on Dalton there, the big gaps. Does, does that mean you've already replaced it? Or it hasn't gone rotten there? Okay, Mike's going to stand up and face you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we were going to get into Yeah. Like, young engineers love talking to customers. Yes. Uh, All right. So the areas that are in blue are the areas where we have priority pipe, also known as bare steel, as Mike was mentioning earlier. The streets that um, aren't covered in blue either have or coated steel or are plastic that was installed. So, what we're doing here you know, on the same RP project is replacing the bare steel areas with plastic. Uh, and so, like, is uh, already plastic in that little gap on the gold or the... Yes, uh, I believe that is either already plastic or put in steel that was installed. Um, and then recently. you can switch backwards and forwards from plastic to coated steel. Yeah, we have transitional fittings so which allow us to connect plastic to steel. So there are areas across Ohio in which we've addressed some of our problem areas with coated steel already, and so that's why sometimes the maps have gaps in them. So you keep track of the repairs over the years, so you know. I mean, how do you know where, what pipe is where? Well, and that's a good point. When we do a repair, let's say I have a job, my job is a leakage inspector, and we go out and walk every mile of pipe we have every three years. And so I write up a sheet that says I smell natural gas in this area. So we have a certain length of time to go out and, and investigate that and make that repair. And so normally it involves a clamp, and we document exactly where it was, what piping system, how long the, the clamp is, how many bolts are on it, and that is part of the data that goes into, it's a, it's a program called Optimane, and then Optimane will look at all of our piping systems across Ohio, give us a score as to which one is causing us the most grief. And so part of our challenge is to each year take those top 50 jobs and replace them the next year. And then in 2016, 50 more will come to the top. We'll replace them. And then the next year, 50 more will come to the top. So we're addressing the projects that cost us the most money first. Because in theory, that's saving our customers the most money. So that's why this is year like eight in the project. So we're just now getting to this area. Sometimes we have uh, like Greenwich, Ohio. You know, I'm not going to know where it is, but it was a project that was really low, and all of a sudden it got water in it. Something happened with the customer service line. There was a flood. Water got into it, and it just went way to the top real quick. So each year we evaluate the systems and try to get the top 50 or so projects and do them in a while. Yes? There's some Well, actually, and that's a good thing. Yes, it does. It's flexible. So with Ohio and the northern climate, with the freezing and thawing, it has some flexibility and it serves. And when we put in these lines, there's a little bit of flexibility built into it. So yes, it is a little bit but, more flexible. Excuse me, Martin, but landslides are... Oh, you said landslides. Landslides and movement of the earth, okay. like in that where you live, okay. is an issue, but we monitor that with our leakage surveys. And we have really intricate, what we call inventory maps now, to show us what pipe is where. So with good locating wire on everything, we can get right to the point and we can keep, you know, we can monitor what's going on with that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say landslides. Landslides. Okay, <laughs> thank you. you know I've, been doing, I've been doing this for eight or nine years and I've never heard a landslide question. Well, you don't bring your ethics. <laughs> well, the only other area is East Liverpool is really, but it's more rock. And it's so more. Just yeah. sheer <laughs> With all the rain we're having, I, I understand that question. It affects the water lines, water lines, and the gas, I think. 
Okay. Yes, sir. We started paying for these repairs in 2008, and what year will they end on the, where they're paid for? Mm -hmm. And how much will that drop our bill? And that's a good, that's a good question. And that's one of the interesting parts of this project is that the math that goes into how much money are we going to save over time by not paying for this, that's a variable I don't know. But I do know that over time, we are going to see this shrink to zero. We're going to be doing these projects for another at least 15 years or so. So somewhere along the line, when these costs go down to zero, and we collected enough to pay for the system, that's going to match, that's when it will end, and I don't know when that will be. It will definitely be at least another 15 years. How much when it happens? <laughs> <laughs> How much your gas go now? Yeah, I your bill? bill. <laughs> then the salaries there are yeah, yeah. I don't know that. But then the salaries come in. Oh, okay. Well, I can say is that the business plan, if you could think of part of your household expenses, Every one of us comes across situations where we have to decide, do I put more money in this car? Do I put more money in this roof? When is the best time to say, I need a different car, I need a new roof? It's a similar one as this. And with us working with the Public Utilities Commission, personally, I think it's a good decision. We've extended the life on this but by using new technology with the anodes and such, but we're getting to the point where it's better to replace this on our own schedule than if all of a sudden we have a problem. If you look on your bill right now, it's about $5, $5.25, five, something like that. Mike, I've got another question for you. Okay. When you take the whole gas bill, into consideration, what part of that gas bill would be our operation and maintenance cost? Is it seven or eight percent? It depends on what if it's winter or summer. Right. But if I mean, it's summertime, it's annual. all all yeah. annually, and you know, depends on how much is used. You pay a minimum charge every month for us providing service to you, maintaining the systems, reading the meters, responding to emergencies. That is flat every month. The amount you pay for the natural gas molecules itself is a variable depending on each month that you that you have. So in the winter months, our service is a lower percentage. In the summer, it's probably 80% of your bill. In the winter, it might be as low as 3%. But, but the lion's share is the actual cost of the gas. The cost of the gas is a significant portion of your bill. Yes, ma'am. The, the uh, depth of the pipes is such that it won't probably damage trees, but the digging of holes and trenches would possibly be a problem. Well, one of the things that we've learned over the years, and we have an advisor that we work with, his name's Dan Struby, and he's a professor, retired professor at Ohio State University, and he's worked with, with us on the best placement of this pipe. And the directional bore technology is the best way of doing it. The bore head looks like a duck bill, and it goes around the tree roots. It doesn't cut them. So when we can use the directional bore technology, that is perfect. Well, you're now deep enough, too. Yeah, three feet. We've learned that most tree uh, root structures are in the upper two feet. But where we have to over cut, then that becomes more of a problem. Right. And if we have enough room in, the, I call it the tree lawn, it's the right of area. Most a lot of these areas don't even have sidewalks. Yeah. So, and actually, right now, what I saw today is that right of way is fairly wide, yeah. and it will try to, to stay away from the root structure as best we can. But there will be some digging around the roots. We did a project last year at Clintonville. We surveyed. There was 300 trees on the project. We categorized them, the age, current condition, and we had Mr. Struby walk it again last Tuesday, and only one tree showed any stress, and he felt that it was going to be fine. True, but we, we do have some advisors that help us. 
with regards to the best installation method, and we don't want to injure the trees. That's why for us to be able to get the sewer videos done in some areas, if there's a problem with the sewers and we know it ahead of time, then we're nowhere in open cut. So if there's a sewer issue, whether it's sanitary or storm, if they're currently damaged or blocked, then we're probably going to have to open cut in that area. And if that's true, then the city's probably going to need to come back and around the same time and fix those sewers anyway. And I think there is a small area here where the city is targeted as a possible replacement for the sewers. What street was that? This Graham. Graham? <laughs> <laughs> Your Graham Street? So there's some areas in which Graham Street may get some sewer work done. And of course, after you guys are all gone to see, it's going to come back and able the roads again. Yes, absolutely. We need to go black. I can't hear <laughs> But really, once we are done, we've seen communities make decisions to pave an area. If they know we have problems in an area, they're not going to pave it because we're always there digging. But the city will know that we're done with this area and that may move it higher up on the prioritization. And they also have problems in the area. But right now, the only area we know that there could be some sewer issues when your team starts to these construction, they start at or they move east. Do they stick a, do they finish up strat or full by to the next one, or are they all over the whole? I mean, is there some work going on here, some on Dalton, some on Fuzzy? Nancy, we're going to try to work in the That's what I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to try to work strat more. Clean it up, move to the next one. That's what <clears throat> there are some cases where we've got streets that we've got tied that line into the line that's the next street over. Yeah. So we could possibly be on two streets at one time. But, but, not, we're not but you're not going to be all over those. No, we're, not, we're going to try our very yes. best not to make it look like a bomb went off in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Our, our biggest holes, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you where the biggest holes are going to be. The sign directional boring down the street, and I'm going that way. And I put in 400 feet. And I'm going to put 400 feet going that way. So I have pipe that's sticking up out of the ground that's coming this way and pipe that's coming this way. I have to be able to butt those two pieces together and fuse those together. So where we have two more poles together, that hole will be big. That's the biggest hole we have. And we try to make sure that's not in an area where there's trees where we have plenty of room to work. So the tie-in holes generally have, are the biggest ones. When you have a heads up. Say that again, let her read. Go ahead, you, you used to get a heads up at, at your property about when it might be, because if you're out of town, what happens? OK, I'll answer that, and then Joe has something to say. If you don't happen to be home, remember, we're, we're going to be working here for Phil Halloween. This system will be operating simultaneously with this system for pretty much the whole time. So, if you happen to be away, it's only a week or two at a time, you can stay on this system while all your neighbors are going to be on this system. And then when you get back, we will have left a tag with you that has a cell phone number of someone who's working specifically on this project, and you would call and say, I'm home. You know, this isn't about the holidays. Got to be done by then. Even though there's no sidewalks. Okay, I have one more thing to say before I can get to Joseph. I always forget this part, and I did last night too. So when we're done with this pipe, so let's say your meter's in the basement. This will be the old pipe that's going into your house. We will cut that off and plug it and seal it where it comes into your house. We'll do that at the main also. And we're done with the entire main. We're going to send air through the, through this to purge the entire system of any molecules of natural gas. And then those will be plugged. So this will be abandoned in place in the ground. But we will make sure that no water or moisture gets to 
your house or in your foundation because of that. So, yes, and, and the service line will be left in the ground. Yes. Yeah. We won't be pulling them out. Yes, Joe. Okay, Mike. Uh, everything Mike told you is 100% true. <laughs> but, but I want you to understand that Mike is talking about a very uh, controlled environment in here when he's picking the pipe up and moving it around and showing you what that. When we're out there doing the work, it won't be that controlled. And Mike's right, the biggest hole we hope will be where we tie it. But if something happens and we were to break a sewer line or a water line while we're in this process, that hole can get big and it can be messy. We will make it right. We will be there. You know, anybody that you see on the job, Mr. Shepard, uh, a Hank Archer, any of those people you see working, if you have a concern, if you share that with them, it'll be solved. We want any problems to stay at the, the level right here, face to face, to, on the street. We don't want you to have to get on the phone and get on a carousel or anything. If you have a concern, mention it and we'll get to you and we can work it out. I mean, you just, it's so simple but it's so complicated all at the same time. And my friend Mike is never wrong. Tom is out to service teams that we're going to have to put in. Some of the are going to have two holes because okay. got longer. Yeah, when we look at the map and you're done, let's picture you're on the west side of the street and the main's on the east side of the street. So on your side of the street, there's not going to be a lot of digging, but I have to get your service line to you. So I'm a house on this side of the street. I'll have a hole here. We want the service line to be at a right angle from the main, pretty much. So we'll look at the house and we'll look to see where the best place to put the T will be. But we have to do that for your side of the street also. So your service line will start across the street from you. So you'll have less digging on your side. So that's why I always ask people to go look at the map before you leave, because you'll have an idea of where the most digging will occur. Yeah, and you can tell us. Yes, uh, Mike Wall, that's Mike's job. Well, uh, the engineer. Yes. Okay. He's more talented than Joe and I. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to interrupt again. <laughs> Our, our pipeline from Newark, Ohio, Mr. Shepard and Mr. Archer here will be the, the people doing it. We've had a great relationship with them for how many years? Six years? Six or seven years. Great company, local people. Um, they're just a pleasure to work with compared to a lot of people you work with. Don't hesitate to talk. We can solve problems and communicate. And there's one thing that we can't control. It's the weather, and of course, Mike's already taking care of that. He's blessed us so good. Yeah, you're welcome. To, we always encourage people to come out and watch. If you have questions, the more you know about what we're doing, the, the less anxiety you'll have. So if it's fine to come out and say, what's this? Where's this going to go? Why are you doing that? Uh, that's great. So feel free to come out and talk to any of us. Mike's going to be on the job pretty much the whole time, so um, we're going to be out there. Now, eventually, we had to become problems just sitting in your room. How many people are going to be expecting them at the... That's hard. How many vehicles is that? No, just total vehicles. We're not in any one area a long time, so our goal is to get a few hundred feet or so, four or five hundred feet every day. So it's not going to be, there'll be a day where we're going to be there to send them off, but the next day we want to be past your house. So yes, vehicles are in the area. We'll have steel plates if we have to open up front of the driveway to let people in and out. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to be, it's a, it's a mess, but it's manageable. We're going to cop, we're going to make, we'll do our best to keep yeah, it's not as bad as a sewer or water line replacement, but it is, there is a lot of digging involved. Do you have some sort of advice 
plate, like you said. Big steel plate. Okay. You have the equipment that you drive up there if you need it. Yes, it depends on those spot holes that you see where we watch the warhead come across. There might be plywood over those. We'll make sure they're combed off and you won't step in them. So, but there is disruption to some sidewalks, some driveways, and so forth. Yes, ma'am. Is there is there any way to uh, is there only one answer as to where? The best place is to to put my service line. Is there only one answer, or are there a number of? Is options? your meter in the basement? Yes. Okay. There's a number of places, and one of the things we had a question. Were you here when the tree question was asked? Okay. So, like trees. Let's say the you have. We can put it anywhere on the left hand side of the house, anywhere on the front, or anywhere on the right hand side of the house. So a lot of times, we, and we want this to run somewhat at the right angle from the street. Right. So you might say, really, I want it right here. And then we look around, and there's a giant oak city to where the service line would go. So the best place for it, there's a number of places where it can go. We'll work with you where it will go, but there might be some variables as to what's at the street that might affect the decision because of we don't want to disrupt an old tree. So you may compromise and say, okay, well, let's put it two feet over here or three feet over here. But there is no perfect place for it to be. We can work around issues such as trees and bay windows and flower gardens. You said that we're some parameters, like you don't put it under a window. Yeah. There's some things that we can do. We can run bent lines. The only thing we're really concerned about is the bent line under here. And we can run a bent line out to get us an extra foot or so. Um, some flexibility of where we can put that setting. In a conversation with the guys that are out there, we'll, I mean, we, can, we can solve the issues. Okay. And working in other areas, and that also, is this just the one key area that you're This year, just here. It, I like it better this time of year. There's some projects that start January 3rd. So what Richard is saying really is this is the worst biking in Athens. Your program is surface business that do this first. Well, if you think about it, you wouldn't want to have been the ones that we did in 2008. Right. We have done thousands of miles before we've gotten to. So it's somewhere between that first, and this is probably the 400. In Athens. In Athens. In Athens. This is what's good. We've done, what, maybe three projects here? Oh, you've already done three projects? Yeah. Yeah, our first one, we might have been in this room. I know it was in this building, but it was four or five years ago. We did the mm -hmm. East State project. Yeah, over there, over by. From Morris Avenue to uh, Bob Avenue. Oh, that's a big area. Oh, yeah, so we've done some in the area already. Yeah, well, I think there's 18,000 people playing. We're, we're reflecting on the fact that this stuff was installed in the 1950s. Right. So we think 54. Yeah. Around that. Our records aren't exactly perfect back there. Because I wasn't working there yet. Uh -huh. That's what. <laughs> I wasn't bored. I was 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 bored. we are bored. I was 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 that's good. All right, so we'll have all the materials we're going to use up here. Okay. You can come up and look at them. You can ask questions one-on-one. -on -one. You can look at the map. I think Shane has one more thing to say. Do you have a, uh, did all of you pick up the multicolored uh, piece of paper back there? Well, if you can do the evaluation, that's great too. But there's a multicolored piece of paper that's got, I think you have one right there with the green and the orange. Uh, this one. 
Can I borrow this for just a moment? <laughs> there are a variety of different uh, programs that are available to, to help save uh, and also be energy efficient. There was actually an article yesterday, I think, in the Athens Post that talks a little bit about some of these programs. And I encourage you to take a look at them, especially the Home Performance Solutions program. Um, there's an audit available where you can have an energy auditor come in, take a look at your home, the energy efficiency of the home, and it can actually help save on the cost of the bill as well. So I was asking about the, the cost earlier. Uh, I did it for my house. It's like $25 or $50 to, to have the audit done. And you get some goodies with it too, because if you're an AED customer as well, they'll do like the light bulbs, they'll replace the light bulbs with the new ones. Uh, if you need a programmable thermostat, they'll put one of those in if it's needed. Um, energy efficient shower heads, they'll put one or two of those in. And then immediately with just that work alone, like our bill went down about 20 or $30 a month. Uh, and then if they uh, have something like um, insulation recommendations, there's a lot of great rebates available for that. They're instant rebates and they can help you tremendously. Uh, and and they, they do the work uh, pretty quickly. Um, it's a really good program, so I really encourage you to take a look at that, give them a call, there's no obligation to it, uh, and, and it's just a good way to, to help save some money and also be uh, more energy efficient as well. Okay? Yes, sir? Two questions related to streets. Charles Street is listed on the map, but it's not listed under the list of street names. Is That's it? probably an oversight on my part, because if it's on the map, it should be on the list. Okay. The so, second, Pleasant View is listed on the map, but incorrectly because it's listed where Charles Street, that I'm bringing to Charles <laughs> Street. So is Pleasant View part of the repair? Just as a tie-in location. Okay, so just as a tie-in location. So meaning where we'll tie into the old system. Okay. 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 Thank you.